ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಾಂಧಸ್ಯಾಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಾಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತಾಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಛಾ ಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಟಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯೋ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ with the blessings of shri shri radha govinda shri shri gaurnitai and shri laprupat we are doing our uh, we are continuing our studies on bhagavad gita today is the uh, fourth lesson or day 4 second chapter text number 12 we are going to start with what we studied in the last class that is uh we have seen the principles of varnashrama dharma and arjuna uh, what reasons he has given for not fighting on the basis of varnashrama dharma then how in general principle uh, arjuna's dilemma and surrender into krishna are relevant for our own practice and practice of uh, krishna consciousness this we have discussed uh, we have done the exercise for this now all together we have five reasons in the fourth chapter we had four reasons for not fighting that is given by arjuna and in the fifth uh, chapter this second chapter beginning arjuna gives one more reason that is indecision i don't know whether to fight and kill my kinsmen or uh, be defeated in their hands and uh, uh, make them happy by giving my life so what is uh, proper for me i am not able to understand so that was the uh, answer or that is the reason arjuna gives to krishna so finally arjuna decides not to fight and he accepts krishna as the spiritual master so now krishna has taken the spiritual master the position of krishna spiritual master of arjuna now lord krishna is going to defeat arjuna's arguments one by one all those arguments whatever he has given in the first chapter and second chapter these arguments are properly defeated uh, so that arjuna can understand he, what is his duty and what he has to do in the beginning lord krishna gives arjuna the knowledge of soul what is soul 
the beauty of this vedic science is it will give us the knowledge of the soul in the material world whatever education system we have they do not teach us about the existence of the soul or our real identity so because of that what happens we will not be able to understand what is my position and why i am here what is my goal of life these things will not be answered by studying the material science so this can be understood only by learning the vedic science so in bhagavad gita the very first knowledge or very first thing that arjuna received from krishna is the knowledge of the soul now when we make a phone call to someone what is the first thing we we do either their name should be there that it has to be fed in our mobile phone so that we can come to know who is speaking or if it is a unknown number first we will uh, ask them what question we ask them can anybody answer if you are receiving a unknown call from your mobile phone what question do you ask first may who know are you who yes yes may i know whom to uh, whom i am talking to. to yes yes thank you yeah so this is the first question we ask everyone whom i am speaking if i don't know whom i am speaking then why should i speak and what are the data i am sharing with them i don't know so first we have to we have to establish the identity now if i don't know who am who am i first of all then what is the purpose of my life it can't be answered so that knowledge uh, arjuna is receiving from krishna at the very first step arjuna you are not this body you are a spirit soul so that is the first lesson every child has to learn and when we learn this we will have universal brotherhood we will have peace everywhere we can achieve vasudeva kutumbakam there will not be any difference there will there is no difference between a black man or a white man there is no difference between a animal or human being everyone will treat equally each and every person now let us see what arjuna what shri krishna speaks about uh, this if you go to bhagavad gita hope everyone has their bhagavad gita in their hands chapter 2 text 11 this is the first shloka that our lord answers to krishna or the lord starts speaking the word bhagavan the uh, this explanation is done in your previous classes the level 1 itself will tell you what is the word uh, meaning of bhagavan the six kinds of opulences that are present with the lord why we call lord as bhagavan and why vyasadev has written shri bhagavan uvacha all these things are explained so i am not going to discuss it once more so we'll uh, continue our discussion So what Krishna speaks here? Shri Bhagavan Vacha Ashochanan Vashochastvam Pradya Vadanscha Bhasha Se Gatasun Agat Agatasunscha Nanu Shochanti Pandita. The supreme personality of God had said, while speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. those who are wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead so this is the jnana what arjuna receives na jayate mriyate va kadachin for the soul there is neither birth nor death at any time the picture here at the right side you can see there is a boatman and somebody is drowning in the water and he is showing the shirt can anybody explain this what is happening here you can raise your hand first yeah 
क्या दीप की माता जी हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी गणवत प्रणाम प्रभु जी हेयर इट हैज बीन एक्सप्लेन देयर इज एन एनालॉजी इन व्हिच इज दिस मेंशन दैट वी ट्राई इंस्टेड ऑफ आई मीन दिस इज द एग्जांपल ऑफ द ड्रेस ऑफ अ ड्राउनिंग मैन एंड द ड्राउनिंग मैन हिमसेल्फ so what we try to do is we are trying to save the shirt or the dress of the person but what we have to do is we have to save the person instead of saving the uh, dress of the person so this means that instead of saving our uh, i mean we uh, look after or take care of this body but we really uh, do not look after what is required for the soul so the nourishment of the soul is required and that is possible only when we serve the lord because since we are eternally uh, connected with him we will not be satisfied until and unless we serve him yes. so this has been mentioned here prabhu thank you mother yes ma thank you prabhu yeah. so here the body is important because the soul is present inside but we cannot neglect the presence of the soul the soul is more important than the body now arjuna's lamentation is for the body not for the soul he is telling their body will be destroyed so krishna is speaking a learned person he will not lament either for uh, living or for the dead that means the the soul the present the soul which is present within the body it doesn't have uh, death it it cannot be destroyed continuing further krishna speaks here the next shloka here you can see नवाहम जातुनासम नेमे जनाधिप न भविष्याम सर्वे वयम अत परम नेवर देर वाज अ टाइम व्हेन आई डिड नॉट एक्सिस्ट नॉर यू नॉर ऑल दीज किंग्स नॉर इन द फ्यूचर शल एनी ऑफ अस सीज टू सीज टू बी दैट मींस द सोल इज चेंजिंग द बॉडी नाउ आवर बॉडी हैज सो मेनी सेल्स द मेडिकल साइंस सेज दैट द बॉडी इज मेड ऑफ सेल्स एंड दीज सेल्स आर डाइंग एवरी डे every second every every minutes the so many cells are dying and new cells are coming up so the entire body it it will it will change its complete cells within a span of 7 years that's what i heard from the medical science or the devotees so within seven, uh, within a span of 7 years we completely have a new body that means the 7 years before what cells were present in my body none of them are present now that means every minute we are changing our body and at the present moment i have certain kind of body and after some time my body is going to change the body is not growing actually it is changing it is multiplying in cells and new cells are coming then what is death death means you are leaving this present body and taking another body so every minute every second we are changing our body but it is not visible to us it is happening in a very a uh, small quantity or in a very minute extent but in the death we completely give up this body because of the age or because of any uh, difficulty for the soul to live in this body and it will take up a new body the soul was existing in previous life also in some other body it may be human body or animal or bird whatever and in future also it will exist there was no time when soul was not existing it is eternally existing and in future also it will continue to exist there is no destruction for the soul it will always be present dehi nosmin yatha dehi kaumaram yauvanam jara tatha dehantara praptir dhiras tatra namuhyati so as the body changes or as we have different Uh, cells in our body what happens the body size increases so we have kaumara or yavana or jara that means we have childhood you have uh, youthhood we have old age then the death will come tata dehantara prapti dehantara means changing the body dhiras tatra namuhyati one who knows this fact he will not get bewildered as the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age the soul similarly passes into another body at death a sober person is not bewildered by such change
now next continuation matra sparshastu kaunteya shitoshna sukha dukkhada agama paino anitya stanti tiksha swabharata o son of kunti the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons they arise from sense perceptions o sign of bharata and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed why krishna is speaking this here so arjuna may say that so this is like druvam janma mrutasya cha one has taken birth he, he will he has to die and he will take birth again now if if uh, if you say that the body is getting destroyed the soul is eternal but i am attached to the body itself i i am i am looking for the body i need that body of the person i am very much attached to it so that's why i am feeling very unhappy or uh, i can't destroy the body i don't want to see the body destru- destruction of the body so for that lord krishna is telling this just like we have rainy season now then after rain we have the winter then again we have summer like that the seasons are changing so do we hate that season no we have to tolerate it similarly matra sparshastu kaunteya matra means the sense objects shabda sparsha rupa rasa gandha whatever the five senses we have the food for this five senses are called matras uh, or tan matra or matra whenever this matra or sense objects comes in contact with the senses it will either give you sukha or it will give dukkha agama paino anitya it keeps it keeps coming and it keeps going you have to tolerate there is no way you can avoid it tan titikshasva bharata similarly the death is coming and after death you will get another birth and again there will be death so this is unavoidable you cannot escape from this this is a cycle since you are taken birth you have to die and since you are died without clearing your karma again you have to take birth based on your desires so what is there to lament dhiras tatra namuhyati tanti tikshasva bharata you have to tolerate you have to learn to tolerate so what uh, purport in prabhupad says here to uh, 2.18 from both view points there is no cause of lamentation because the living entity as he is cannot be killed nor can the material body be saved for any length of time or permanently protected now if arjuna says that uh, i lament for the soul or i am i don't want to see the destruction of the person the real person so what happens here the real person i am worried about means there is no death the soul doesn't die and if you say that the body is is also important for me the body also has to be saved that means here the body has to die one day even if you try also if you don't fight this war it doesn't mean that those who are gathered here will not die at all they are going to die at any point of time in future so better let them die for a good cause so this is a good cause or this is the dharma yuddha where whoever gives up their body here at this present uh, in the presence of the lord they all attain their spiritual body or they will advance in their uh, in their spiritual life or they can get a higher position or they can get a better living so that their life will be perfected or else they will go back home and they will engage in their household activities and one day they will die so death cannot be avoided don't think that you just say i'll not kill them so that they will they will always remain don't that no that will not happen now coming to karma kanda section so i will go to that shloka 31 
स्वधर्मीक्षसी धर्मिया Arjuna you are a kshatriya so you have to fight there is no better engagement for you this fighting will not be available for all the people this fighting is available only for certain very pious kshatriya or if you are you are very lucky to have this fighting otherwise see uh, the war doesn't happen all the time the war happens at certain time only every day there is no war even in india also there there was no war for so many years so many people gets recruited to army and they retired without do fighting any war now what is the benefit of fighting this war this present this mahabharata war here the lord himself is asking arjuna to fight and this is a dharma yuddha and whoever lies down their life here they will get at least heavenly planet and if they win they will enjoy the world that means in both ways it is beneficiary for them yeah i made pradesh prabhu as co host netrauti mata ji can you see the ppt and uh, the veda base simultaneously when i'm changing it yes prabhu ji clear visible no okay thank you so akshatriya's duty is to fight so arjuna has to fight there is no uh, way to escape this is a karma kanda section where arjuna uh, krishna is speaking to arjuna from 31 to 37 people will always speak of your infamy and for a respectable person dishonor is more worse than death what could be more painful for you so this is 34 to 36 34 35 36 you can see now arjuna krishna told both ways you, uh, it will be good for you either you fight and die and go to heaven or you win the war and enjoy the kingdom jatas se dhruvam it is if you if you if you if you get killed or if you die in the battlefield you will enjoy the heavenly planet and if you win you can enjoy the kingdom therefore both ways it is giving you happiness or enjoyment but if you don't do either of them that means if you don't fight if you don't fight there is no point in getting killed in the battlefield or neither you can uh, win the war so what is what is remaining for you you will be considered as a coward people people will think that bhayadranad paramate mansante twa maharatha people will think that oh this person has ran away from the battlefield because of fear they don't think that arjuna is very pious Oh, he left the uh, kingdom for us. No, Arjuna, uh, this Duryodhana will not think like that. What he will think, Arjuna has left because he uh, he was afraid of the army. He is not able to fight. So uh, this is the one which gives you very bad name. People will speak about bad about you, or they will dishonor dishonor you. So better Arjuna, you fight and fight. and either of them will happen either you will win or you will you get defeated but both are good for you don't don't try to run away from this uh, battlefield what could be more painful than you uh, more painful than this for you just like a student who was scoring very good marks every time and if if he if he or she gets very less marks in the exam because of some negligence or uh, some overconfidence how much pain they feel So this is a small exam, example of a exam, but this war is a war in which the soldiers of the entire world is involved. 
and arjuna has the opportunity to win the war because krishna himself is the chariot driver and he is giving the instruction and the victory is certain we have already done the in the first chapter we have done the analysis how arjuna is going to win the war sanjay also have told now arjuna is definitely going to win because his party even though they are small in number they have all the power for winning the war and there are so many problems in the duryodhana side now if arjuna doesn't fight this and later if he comes to know that oh, i could have done this how much pain he will get that that is very difficult to uh, bear so better you fight arjuna you don't uh, run away from this battlefield next uh, krishna is speaking about uh, this karma kanda continue in 2 232 you can see swarga dwaram apavrutam those who win this war or those who this text number 32 those who have the book can see the next shloka यत्रच्छया चोपपन्नम स्वर्गद्वारम अपावृतम सुखिना क्षत्रिया पार्थ लभन्ते युद्धम इदृशं सो ओ पार्थ हैप्पी आर द क्षत्रियास टू होम सच फाइटिंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज कम ऑन शॉट ओपनिंग फॉर देम द डोर्स ऑफ द हेवेनली प्लैनेट्स सो इफ यू फाइट दिस द हेवेनली प्लैनेट इज ओपन फॉर यू सो यू डिसाइड व्हेदर यू वांट टू फाइट दिस वॉर और यू वांट टू रन अवे फ्रॉम द वॉर continuing further and if you however do not perform your religious duty of fighting then you will certainly incur sins for neglecting your duties so not only uh, you are you are you, know, you will be in trouble everyone will be in trouble because people have come here thinking that oh we have arjuna we have such a great leader such a great fighter now if you go back then what will happen to all those people what do they think how can they continue to fight the war so this is what uh, krishna is speaking to arjuna if he abandoned the battle not only would he neglect his specific duty as a kshatriya but he would lose all his fame and good name and thus prepare his royal road to hell in other words he would go to hell not by fighting but by withdrawing from battle so this is exactly opposite statement what arjuna gave in the beginning in the first chapter arjuna told if i fight this war there will be sin and i have to go to hell now uh, arjuna uh, krishna is speaking arjuna if you don't fight this war you will go to hell or if you 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 have to it is clearly told the same words are used here you certainly you will go to narake aniyatam vaso that is what arjuna used the word now here krishna is speaking in the same tone he would go to hell not by fighting but by withdrawing from battle by because he is failing in performing his duty as the kshatriya duty now there is a story that prabhupad quotes in the classes can anyone uh, read this can raise your hand ashri hari priya mata ji hari krishna ji dandavat pranam the spirit of kshatriya yashomanta sena either he conquers the battle or he lays down his body there dead so the man who has come he must be somebody pretender so she refused to open the door this is the spirit of kshatriya yeah, bhagavad gita 2.33 to 35 london september 3 1973 hari krishna hari krishna shila prabhupad ji jai so here prabhupad is speaking that there was a king whose name was yashwant singh yashwant sena he went to end for a fight but from the fight he came back why he came back uh, he did not win the war neither he died in the war he came back uh, because he got wounded now coming back to his kingdom the door was closed 
the main door was closed and he told the uh, soldiers inform the queen to open the door and tell her that ashoman sen has come back the queen replies to the soldier that this can't be a ashoman sen he must be some imposter or pretender because ashoman sen either he will come uh, winning the war or his dead body will come by he will lie down his body there he will not come back uh, just showing his back towards to the battle so this was the spirit of chatriya in those days so ashwan sena either he conquers the battle or he lies down his body there dead so whoever has come he must be a pretender so this there is a very strong message here for the uh, chatriya so arjuna also lord krishna also speaking the same thing to arjuna now coming to conclusion the compassion that arjuna was showing towards his kinsman it is defeated by giving the knowledge arjuna if you are compassionate for the soul there is no death for the soul so don't be compassionate arjuna if you are compassionate for the body this is the best way to give up the body and body has to be given up you can't keep it forever just like the senses when it gets the sense object there can be happiness or distress and if you uh, are just like the rainy season comes next comes the winter then comes summer we have to tolerate it there will be definitely pain when you change the body there is pain so this jana will remove the compassion the false compassion towards the kinsman and what is the real compassion the compassion for the soul now people if they lie down there their body anyhow they have to give up the soul it will get elevated spiritually so krishna defeats the first argument the second argument arjuna told krishna there is no enjoyment arjuna is asking how you can say that there is no enjoyment where is the enjoyment if you run away from the battlefield you can't have any enjoyment there is no enjoyment either for you or for your people your people will say that arjuna has ran away he is a coward are you going to become happy by hearing all this blasphemy no and do you think you will not have any enjoyment if you fight this war if you fight this war there can be two results either you will die or you will win so both ways that we have elaborately discussed this much both ways it is having its own benefit that is called karma kanda this is the karma kanda principle because here karma kanda means we are using the vedas or the uh, knowledge of the uh, spiritual science for our own enjoyment here why krishna is speaking karma kanda now Ar krishna is telling that arjuna if you win the war you will go to heaven but arjuna is not meant for going to heaven going to heaven is not so great for the devotees devotees go back to krishna or krishna loka or goloka this is speaking in the material point of view that's why it's called as karma kanda the material benefits of following dharma we will go to heaven and we will enjoy there and come back and do yajna here and uh, you satisfy the demigods and again go to heaven and come back like that going to heaven and coming back this is karma kanda i request anyone devoted to read this can raise their hand shri priya sampat mataji hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji both ways you have to fight krishna is trying to put arjuna in a dilemma this way or that way you must have to fight if you if you think that you are not in the bodily concept of life then it is my order you must fight if you think that you are in the bodily concept of life then you are a kshatriya you must fight both ways you have to fight this is krishna's conclusion bhagavad gita 2.31 london september 1973 shila prabhu ka ki Hare. Hare. So, 
this is how Arjuna, Lord Krishna is speaking to Arjuna. Krishna is a perfect teacher. There is no way for Arjuna to escape. He has completely cornered Arjuna. Arjuna, you have to fight. Now Krishna is minimizing the karma kanda. You may say that the Vedas are speaking like this. Now what Arjuna, um, what Krishna is speaking, saying, Yamimam Pushpitam Vacham Pravadanti Avipashtitaha Veda Vadarata Partha Nanadastiti Vadinaha Kamatmana Swarkapara Janma Karma Palapradam Kriya Vishesha Bahulam Bhogaishwarya Gatim Prati. If you have the book, you can see it is the text number 42. The Karmakanda section of the Vedas no, forty two to forty three, Prabhuji. Yeah, but there should be a sloka, no? Forty two. It's not showing the forty two. Okay, anyhow, I'll go back to it. Ah, it is dash. Okay, that's why the address is different. 42 dash 43 address. It's together. No? That's why. Okay. So, what the Vedas are saying, it is having Pushpitam Vacham. Pushpa means flower, flowery language of the Vedas. Okay, let us see what is the translation here. Men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruitive activities for elevation to heavenly planets, resultant good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification and opulent life, they say that there is nothing more than this. The Vedas are meant for everyone. It will welcome everyone. It will not say you don't have anything to find here, please go out. No, Vedas will not say like that. You want anything you want, it is there in Veda. And most of the people, what they want, they want a going to heavenly planet, enjoying the material opulences and uh, having a good birth or power control, all these things they want. So Vedas will give that. It's, it is called as flower. Actual fruit is not available. In the plant, if you pluck the flower itself in the beginning, there won't be any fruit. The flower has to fructify and it has to give the fruit. If you enjoy the flower itself, how can you get the fruit? The real purpose of the Vedas, it will be discussed in the further shloka. In that, we are not interested. We are only interested in the byproduct of the Vedas. Just like people, some of the people will recommend read Bhagavad Gita so that you'll get good health and you'll get good sleep in the night that we also uh, we can also experience if we read Bhagavad Gita if you don't get sleep immediately the sleep will come or if you take a mala and start chanting you'll get very good sleep it doesn't take even five minutes to get fall asleep so that is that is not the way or that is not the why it is meant for so that is flowery language or that is a side effect or the byproduct of Vedas. Now Arjuna, Krishna is minimizing it. Don't go for this byproduct. You go for the real product. What finally you get the fruit from the plant or the tree that you have to accept. The real Vedaishta Sarvair Ahameva Vedyaha Vedantagrat Veda Videva Chaham. From the Vedas you have to know what who I am or this is talking about the Bhakti Yoga. Who is the Lord? That is the purpose of Veda. It is not that going to heaven or enjoying or getting some power to control others. That is not um, why Vedas are meant for. So Krishna is minimizing that. Men of small knowledge are attached to it. But uh, if you are really intelligent, don't go for it. Why? The another reason is Trigunya Vishaya Veda. Nistraigunya Bhavarjuna. These Vedas are speaking about three Triguna. Uh, Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. But in all the three, they are 
binding us. The Vedas deal mainly with the subject of the three modes of material nature. Oh, Arjuna, become transcendental to these three modes. Definitely, the Sattva Guna is higher than other two, Raja Guna and Tama Guna. But that is also binding. A person who is in Sattva Guna, he will become very happy and he will become very knowledgeable. The knowledge raised to the uh, ego and uh, the happiness will give laziness. So laziness leads to tamaguna and the ego or the you will get puffed up by having too much knowledge. Then it will go to rajoguna. So from sattvaguna there is always a chance to drag oneself or, or fall down oneself from sattvaguna to rajoguna and tamaguna. It is like uh, binding a person with uh, uh, iron chain or a uh, some other uh, silver chain or golden chain. What kind of chain you want to be bound with? Do you want iron chain or silver chain or golden chain? It doesn't matter what metal you use. It is all a bondage. I want I want to be liberated. I don't just don't want to be bound at all. It, I, neither at gold or silver or iron. It is all binding. Similarly, either you go for Sattva Guna, Raja Guna or Tama Guna, it is all binding. Of course, Sattva Guna is helping us. It is giving a good platform for realizing or coming to Krishna consciousness. But it is, you don't get stuck there. You have to continue. So, Karma Kanda. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is what Arjuna is, uh, Krishna is speaking about Karma Kanda. So, everyone understood, I hope, what is Karma Kanda. Using the Veda, the instructions of the Veda, for our personal benefit. This is condemned or minimized by Lord Krishna. Now we have a small exercise. Read Bhagavad Gita, text number 45-46, verses and perfect everything. And discuss the relevance of the Karmakanda division of the Veda in the practice of Krishna consciousness. How are the practices of ISKCON authorized from Vedic point of view? So these are the questions. How much relevant this Karma Kanda division in practice of Krishna consciousness? This is one question. Second question is how are the practices of ISKCON authorized from Vedic point of view? So now the time for discussion will make have a breakout room. I'll make, there are 18 people, so I'll make six uh, groups so that uh, three people each. Uh, you have five minutes time, you can discuss thoroughly and list out all the points, then you can uh, give that. We'll discuss, you can choose one leader among you so that he can, he or she can present the points, okay? If the time starts now, I'm opening the rooms. Okay, uh, just a minute. I made a fine of all. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can I join back the breakout room? Uh, Mataji, I'm closing the group one second. I made a mistake. Uh, actually, instead of making six, I made three groups. Okay, because I just look, look out from the uh, break. I don't know how I just joined back here. 
Yeah, just a minute. I'll come back. I'll. Takes one minute to close the window. I am sorry. I am sorry for all the problem caused. Actually, I had to make six groups. I made three groups. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So you will have three people to discuss. Six people is too much to discuss within five. Oh, okay. I am very sorry. So we'll make the group now. I don't know how to increase the number without break closing it. So I made it like this. So just a minute. So totally there are six groups. So three people each, three or sometimes two also. So I'm opening the rooms. Thank you. You have five minutes okay. time. Oh, thank you, Professor. Oh, which I couldn't join. Oh, okay.
okay we are closing the rooms in one minute I hope everyone has returned to the room, from the room. Yeah, you can raise your hand among the group leaders. You can keep your hands raised so that one by one you can two, take two minutes to explain your points. How the Karma Kanda is relevant in the practice of Krishna consciousness and how ISKCON has authorized this in the Vedic point of view. Okay, three people have raised their hands. Shri Hari Priya Mataji, you can start. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanavad Pranam. Hare Krishna. The relevance of uh, Karma Kanda in practice of Krishna consciousness is by doing, by getting involved in Krishna consciousness, we get into the transcendental mode and we try to blend the Karma Kanda with the uh, spirit of uh, performing everything in the uh, will of the God or be associated with Krishna. For example, I will say that we all the people or the people who are from this particular section who have joined the movement which is of Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. She dropped out. Yeah. Maybe network problem. Yes, Prabhuji. She has network problem. Mm -hmm. We can give to next part. Yeah, I'm so sorry that I have a network tripping because I am on 15th floor. Actually, so, are almost so hitting the sky. <laughs> more, close to more, more close to Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, uh, Prabhuji, like uh, when uh, we associate the karma kand, like we say that uh, one of the sanskars as per the Vedic rituals is marriage. And when we involve it, like Srila Prabhupada has also mentioned that if you uh, blend it with Krishna consciousness and do it with the purpose of uh, producing a Krishna uh, devotee progeny, then that particular thing becomes uh, transcendental in that mode. So the karma kand is blended with Krishna consciousness, it becomes transcendental. Similarly, the practice of ISKCON authorized from Vedic point of view is as uh, there is an analogy which is mentioned that all the purposes which are served by small little wells all over like one is used for washing one is the one well is used for cleaning or some other purposes that entire purpose the way it is resolved by using a one large reservoir of water similarly by in kali yuga in the age of kali because every activity is in this material world contaminated by the modes of material nature so uh, lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and iskon follow that principle of chanting hare krishna maha mantra so by simply chanting Harinam, all the contamination of the material world uh, gets away and we get, we get involved with Sri Krishna and everything becomes transcendental by associating it with uh, Sri Krishna. Yeah. So that is what my Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So Karma Kanda has some uh, role in our life to play and it will regulate our life. It's like uh, we have to uh, 
follow the rules on of the society when we are living in the society but we should know what is its real purpose the analogy is given if you know the purpose the real purpose of the vedas then everything is included within that okay rakshita mata ji hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna prabhu ji so uh, in uh, 45th uh shloka there is a purport saying uh, vedas deal almost ev- uh, with all the fruitive activities which elevate one to the transcendental plane so that is dharma artha kama moksha we start with working and then financial development and then uh, you know we, we uh, gratify all our senses and all our uh, material desires and then we go to moksha that means after all the enjoyment we finish up with all the material en- enjoyment brahma jignyasa you know uh, uh, we start wondering why we are still here and that is when uh, we we use whatever remaining part of our life to attain uh, uh, moksha to to go towards a spiritual realization so this way what happens uh, this is karma kanda through karma kanda also we can go into the spiritual uh, platform or uh, krishna kanda consciousness and uh, that is one thing uh, but that takes a lot of time so we have to finish up with all the material enjoyment but iskon says uh, like mataji told blending side by side through our uh, uh, the, the way we are living grihasthas can also go into spiritual consciousness how by involving krishna in everything so keeping krishna in the center and then living our life and then uh, one, one thing iskon uh, also says is i mean krishna has also said all the purpose purpose of all the vedas is to know him only right so uh, so it's like rivers all the river water ultimately goes and reaches the sea so there is no point in uh, you know um, uh, uh, does uh, this um, you know may, uh, fulfilling our desires material desires one by one and then uh, go and going and des- uh, fulfilling our uh, soul's desire of reaching uh, the lord because because of the soul we are we are in this body we have the body body has a life so by directly fulfilling the desire of the soul our body's desires are also fulfilled so uh, that means you you directly uh, you know with one uh, one big reservoir of water you can use that water for all the purposes instead of using uh, buckets of water for each uh, and uh, other uh, different purposes and uh, yeah and also the three gunas you know the trigunya uh, so uh, the three modes of material nature uh yes goodness is good but like you said uh, it's like a golden uh, rope binding us uh, but that is also bondage so what iskon is saying is you have to raise to suddha sattva guna so that is a uh, transcendental plane um so that there is no chances of falling down and through that you can again uh, reach krishna hari krishna hari krishna thank you thank you very much yeah there is no end for sense gratification you can enjoy for any long time but you cannot completely satisfy the senses it is not possible uh, just like in the childhood we had certain kind of uh, desire i want to have a balloon i want a toy and after that my desires are it is not no more now now somebody ask me do you want balloon i'll not say yes i'll say no i don't want why or don't I, what i should do with this balloon my desire completely changed that means the the it becomes meaningless sense gratification is meaningless when the time passes away as of, as we change our body our desires are going to change so if you don't de- don't satisfy those desires also it will not uh, have so much effect in our life but what happens without uh, by gratifying these sen- senses in line with the krishna consciousness it will help us to go more nearer to krishna so as you have told whatever desires we have we have to make it in line with the krishna's uh, serving of lord krishna because we cannot give up everything at a time it becomes very difficult for each and every person so we have to dovetail it thank you mata ji thank you hari krishna radha vallabhi mata ji hari krishna ya hari krishna prabhu ji thank you for now okay i think uh, the previous speakers have already talked about it so let me uh, uh, put two three points the purpose of veda is to serve krishna because uh, and karma kand is important uh, to help us to transcend transcend to that position where we can understand krishna Uh, this material body uh, is basically uh, you know when we are in the karma kand 
there is a possibility of actions, reactions, because we are bind with these three gunas, rajas, tamas, and sattva. And as Prabhuji, you talked about the three chains, silver, gold, and uh, the iron chain. So one has to, um, you know, you know, transcend, transcend. They are important from rules for rules and regulation, but ultimately they will we will get entangled and will always be working for the uh, you know material enjoyment so in order to you know be close to krishna we need to serve the purpose of veda is to serve krishna so that is very important now how iskon is authorized because uh, in iskon we have been told uh, don't leave everything but make krishna in the center and while we are doing our karma kant, but that karma kant is for the pleasure of not a karma kant, all the service we do for the pleasure of krishna and we have been told chant and hear shravanam and kirtanam these are the two basic things to get associated and we will you know get associated that is our beginning point for the devotional service and once we start that we you know, start beginning our journey for the transcendental life. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. So, in the royal road also, there can be accident. So, even if we follow all the Karmakanda sections perfectly, there is no guarantee that you can uh, escape from the reactions, as Mataji told. There will be some reaction, just like the example of Nriga Maharaj. He has uh, donated so many cows but still he had to become a lizard in the next life. The karma kanda is always uh, risky. But if we follow Krishna, if we take the holy name, then it is always beneficial. It will help us to elevate. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Deepti Mataji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, Dhanva Pranam. Uh, Prabhuji, on behalf of the team, I'm just sharing a few, a few more points. Most of them are uh, already discussed. So uh, when we talk about uh, uh, this, these particular phrases and uh, whatever has been discussed, the most important thing is we have to come to a transcendental stage wherein we, and how to achieve that. So that is the real purpose. And what uh, Lord is trying to do is, Arjuna has, he has uh, given up everything. He has uh, laid down his bow also. So uh, Lord is trying to give him some kind of, uh, I mean, um, some kind of uh, different different reasons like okay instead of uh, thinking of you uh, you are trying to just go and uh, live a secluded life so at least try to work let's go one by one and see how karma kanda can help you first so he is trying to basically elevate him step by step he's telling him about all the various phases like what are the various stages through which you can at least achieve that transcendental state so uh, what uh, happens is uh, the real purpose of uh, doing all the karma kanda ritualistic activities and later uh, in case if we try to go to the i mean if we continue with these following all the transcendental uh, stages the real purpose is to understand krishna only because he uh, uh, the real purpose of the vedas is to understand him as it is mentioned in verse 15.15 also that he is the compiler of the vedanta philosophy and he is the knower of all the vedas so he has come in the Shaktiya Veshavtar of uh, Ved Vyasji and then uh, we know how the Vedas have been formed. And not only that, uh, it starts with Brahma Jigyasa. So this also we have understood. And why it happens is the real purpose, how Iskorn is helping us is basically because they help us to understand. In 15.15, it is also mentioned that God says, okay, I only give the remembrance, forgetfulness. So Iskorn is basically help, helping us to revive our uh, forgetfulness thing, you know. Our memory, because we are Mame Vamsho, as we say, Mame Vamsho Jeev Loke Jeev Bhuta Sanatana, Manaha Karma Indriyani Shashthani Prakriti Sthani Karshati. Sorry. So we are struggling even with the mind, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to learn the verses, Prabhu. So uh, he says that since we are the eternal part and parcel of the Lord, so we will only take pleasure where once we will become transcendental. And we are trying to achieve that position, and Iskon is really helping us through the chanting of. Uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, we, that is the initial stage through which we are starting because it is helping in cleansing our heart, Ketu Darpan Martinam. So the, it's completely uh, 
helping us to know how being in this materialistic world how can we ensure that we are trying to satisfy the lord and seeking pleasure in that and at the same time how can we become tolerant and able to achieve the in the dualities like with every kind of an action which we are going to do there are our multiple reactions and we try to get some happiness or distress and we really don't have to stick to it so that is the key thing we have to achieve as mata ji also right rightly mentioned that we have to achieve that stage of shuddha sattva gun so uh, ispan and prabhu pad ji and everybody here are really helping us uh, all the conditioned souls in achieving that for us yes thank you prabhu ji hari krishna yeah step by step we have to use this uh, with uh, karma kanda for elevating ourselves and we should not forget the final goal by following karma kanda i may reach heaven okay heaven is so nice why should i go further so no that should not be happen we should not get carried away by the by products thank you mataji hari krishna hari krishna netravati mataji hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji prabhu ji in the first karma kanda Uh, like uh, as it says in uh, vedanta philosophy also unless the material body is there we have to tolerate all the dualities here krishna also says that sthitoshna uh, sukha dukha daha wherever there is a changes as uh, happiness and uh, dualities come in we have to offer all our uh, results to krishna and surrender so that krishna will take care and uh, he can do wonders on that and uh, it says it as brahma jignasa arjuna also starts uh, asking relevant questions in inquiry of krishna and tries to learn about supreme personality of godhead and when it comes to how are the practices of iskon is authorized prabhu ji here in vedanta philosophy they are saying that the highest perfectional stage of uh, it is to understand the krishna as the highest one and iskon the international society of uh, krishna consciousness means for that prabhupada is trying to awaken the krishna consciousness in everyone to make each and everyone realize that krishna consciousness should be awakened and we should go towards it so and every time chanting hare krishna maha mantra and practicing that will definitely lead us to uh, yes ma'am thank you hare krishna prabhu hare krishna shila prabhupad has made this home for everyone in which everyone can live peacefully and go back to godhead so we have to make use of this great home It's a Vaishnava Kutumba. The entire world is one family. Thank you, Mataji. Morali Daran Prabhu Ji, Hare Krishna. Yeah, after all I have spoken, I would just summarize it in two lines. Uh, it, uh, the purpose of karma understanding karma kanda is to transcend to know that Krishna is your friend, and everything you do needs to be centered around Krishna. Um, awaken your Krishna consciousness. Uh, chant. and move to a self realized place where you know krishna more closely thank you prabhu as thank it you. is told chodna nahi jodna hai you don't have to give up anything whatever you are doing you continue to the, do that but do it all it in the service of the lord yes thank you prabhu ji hari krishna uh, netravati mata ji can we have a kirtan now for five yes, minutes ji, yes yeah. who will do the kirtan harini mata ji माताजी हरे कृष्ण माताजी ओम प्लीज स्टार्ट माताजी ओके हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath, Jai Baladeva, Jai Subhadra. Jai Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath. Jai Baladeva, Jai Subhadra, Jai Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath, Jai Baladeva, Jai Subhadra, Jai Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath, Jai Baladeva, Jai Subhadra, Jagannath Swami Nayana Patagami. Nayana Patagami Bhava to me. Jagannath Swami Nayana Patagami. Nayana Patagami Bhava to me. Jagannath Swami Nayana Patagami. Nayana Patagami Bhava to me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Jai Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath, Jai Baladeva, Jai Subhadra, Jagannath Swami Nayana Patakami Nayana Patakami Bhava to me Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Prabhu Pada, 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada. Prabhupada, Jaya Jaya Prabhupada. Um, Hare Krishna. Okay, we continue our discussion. I request anyone volunteer to read this. Please raise your hand. Sureshwar Priya Mataji. <coughs> Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Hare. the highest Vedantist, the best purpose of Vedanta philosophy is served by inoffensively chanting the holy name of the Lord. The highest Vedantist is the great soul who takes pleasure in chanting the holy name of the Lord. 2.46 per part, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So one who knows the Veda, one who claims that he knows Veda, he must know the importance of chanting Hare Krishna. Or in reverse, one who knows the importance of chanting Hare Krishna and one who practices it, he knows the entire Veda. So, 
the Prabhupada is uh, giving this in purport. So if you if you are a Vedantist, you should understand Vedantist. conclusion. See, if you if you don't know what is gold, it doesn't matter. You can listen to someone and you can identify it. This is gold. You don't have to go to lab and check it whether this is gold or not. Similarly, you don't have to read the entire Veda that is given by Vyasadeva. It is not possible to do in one lifetime. But if you take the essence of the Veda from an Acharya, who is a bona fide coming in the Guru Parampara, it is also as good as knowing the entire Veda. Because you got the essence, you got the science, you got the final conclusion. So it is always better to hear from the Guru and accept the right process. Just like if you go to an Ayurvedic doctor and he will tell you, you have this kind of disease and this is the medicine and you have to go to forest, find out this kind of uh, plants, this much quantity and take it and like, it, like this you have to prepare, he will explain everything. And finally, you have to take it. Now we don't know which medicine has to be taken and where to find it, where it is available, how to prepare it. Instead, somebody, someone will tell, oh, you have this problem and this is the medicine. It's already ready. I already prepared. I have brought everything and it is ready kept. You just mix it in milk and drink it. So which is better? Guru is doing that. The essence, the final conclusion of Veda, it is given by Guru. You just take it. Inoffensively, you chant every day and you can see the result. And by seeing the result, your confidence will increase. So better you take to that instead of trying yourself. Now we will continue to the next session. Now, what is the difference between, okay, we will take some, some questions. Dipti Sahu Mataji, do you have any question? No problem. No. Okay. Anybody has any question, you can raise your hand in this till here, whatever uh, doubts you had, whatever discussion we had, you, if you have any doubts, any questions, any clarification. I always forget to ask the question. Uh, there is no question, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, we'll continue. Then. But uh, there is one line which you said that was very beautiful. That uh, we just focus on the flower, not the real fruit, you know. I mean, uh, the flower, I mean, when we were talking about the flowery words of the Vedas, so that mm -hmm. is very beautiful because he is, I mean, God is the real fruit. Yes. So that is where we have to really focus. So thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Muralidan Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Uh, Tanvi Mataji has been trying to get in. Um, she got locked and then again we opened. Again it got locked. Oh. How can we let her? Uh, actually the room is locked Prabhuji. I, even I am not able to log in uh, with my other phone. Is it locked? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes Prabhuji. It has been locked at 12.28 uh, because a few devotees keep on moving and going. So that's why it's locked. Uh, so, right now we are just unlucky. Yeah, I unlocked it. Thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, meeting, uh, waiting room is enabled. If some devotees are trying, then it can be shown in the waiting room. Yes. So that, that we can allow them. Okay. Yes. Hare, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, quickly go to the next topic. So now what is the difference between Karma Khanda and Karma Yoga? That is explained here. Any volunteers, please? Radha Vallabhi Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Buddhi Yoga, Karma Yoga, Sankhya and Jnana. Thus far I have described this knowledge to you through analytic study, Buddhi Yoga, Karma Yoga. Now listen as I explain it in terms of working without fruitive results. O son of Partha, when you act in such knowledge, you see you can free yourself from the bondage of works. Bhagavad Gita 2.39. Thank you, Mataji. So now Krishna is uh, increasing the bar. He is going one step ahead. Now Karma Kanda we have seen and Karma Kanda leads, leading to Krishna consciousness is allowed and Karma Kanda leading to only sense gratification okay. is not allowed. It's, it's, uh, okay. Somebody can take care of the waiting room. 
it's not allowed or it is uh, it is useless now sankhya and jnana are explained now continuing to the karma yoga now when the karma kanda becomes karma yoga when we have desire for getting the result for our own sense gratification then it becomes karma kanda and when we give up the result of our activity for the satisfaction of the lord lord shri krishna then it becomes karma yoga so that is the major difference between karma kanda and karma yoga in karma kanda since i am attached to the result i get bondage in karma yoga since i am not attached to the result i am i don't get bound now the beauty of this karma yoga is we do all the activities as done by any other materialist but that materialist will get bounded but the devotee doesn't get bound why because he is not attached to the result of his activity just like lord uh, lord rama sent anjaneya or hanuman to lanka and hanuman burned the entire lanka but there was no reaction for him there it is not that uh, hanuman got punished for burning lanka no he he has done it as a service to lord ram he has no attachment to the result so that is karma yoga so now in our life also you cannot completely give up karma if we give up karma how how can we live it is not possible nahi kashchit kshanam api jatutishtati akarma hatr karyatehi havasha karma sarve prakriti jay gune we are bound by the triguna or three modes and we have to do any one or the other activity in each and every moment of our life so activity cannot be given up desires cannot be given up it cannot be made zero but it can be devoted to krishna because if you don't devotee this to krishna in service to krishna then it will bind us because every activity has an action activity means action and it has a reaction and this reaction it will give either good or bad so it will bind us so that uh, result we are attached to to it then again and again you have to take birth but if we give up the result in service to krishna which means karma yoga which is also called as buddhi yoga because you have to use your intelligence for this you cannot do this without intelligence a person who is intelligent and a person who is not intelligent both look same when they are doing any activity but the intention will be different we'll see continue how it is elaborately anybody uh, would like to read this deepa rani mata ji hare krishna hare buddhi yoga apni karma yoga sukha dukhe sama sukhe dukhe same samay krutva labhala bhav jaya jayau tato yuddhaya yujeshwa naivam papam avapshasi do the fight for the sake of fighting without considering happiness or distress loss or gain victory or defeat and by so doing you shall never incur sin bhagavad gita 2.3638 thank you so there is this is called karma yoga earlier krishna told arjuna you fight if you win you go to heaven if you if you get, if you if you lose you will go, go to heaven if you win you will get the kingdom but now krishna is speaking something more arjuna don't worry about heaven and kingdom he just try uh, help telling him to forget it don't worry whether you go to heaven or uh, you get the kingdom you just fight for the sake of fighting as a due matter of duty this is karma yoga earlier it was karma kanda if somebody if you are preaching if somebody is not ready to take up krishna consciousness then you can say oh if you do this you will get this if you do this if you will get this your life will your health will improve you will this is a way of preaching just somehow you bring them to temple somehow you make them start chanting and somehow start let them start read bhagavad gita and once they start it let, then you can say oh don't worry about this material benefits anyhow you will get it so this is preaching uh, 
uh, technique what Krishna is using here. In the beginning, he told Arjuna, if you lose, you'll go to heaven. heaven. Arjuna, if you win, you'll get kingdom. But now he is telling, see how he's changing. Arjuna, don't worry about heaven or kingdom. You just fight for the sake of fighting. Why we have to do this? Because if you think about the heaven, if you think of the kingdom, and if something goes wrong, you will be in distress. And again, you will get caught by the three modes. But if you are not attached, then you will not come back to this material life again. Tato, tato, yudjaya, yudjaswa, naivam papam avapsasi. By doing this, you will not incur sin. Otherwise, you have to take the reaction. Can anybody read this? Sureshwar Priyamataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Buddhi Yoga or Karma Yoga. This is duty. One has to execute duty without any consideration of loss and gain. That is duty, observing duty. Just see, you are Kshetriya. There is necessity of this fighting. So you should not consider whether you are gaining or losing. It is your duty to fight. If you execute your duty nicely, there is no question of sin. Bhagavad Gita 2.27 to 38, Los Angeles, December 11, 1968, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Right. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So here, what Prabhupada is telling, don't worry about the result. Just fight for the sake of fighting. Now this is the famous shloka of Bhagavad Gita. So we can see this. Many people misunderstand this shloka, what is given here. Karmanye vadi karaste ma phale shukadachana ma karma phala hetu bhur ma te sangostva karmani. You have a right to perform your prescribed duty, but you are not entitled to the fruits of action. Never consider yourself the cause of the you know, results of your activity and never be attached to not doing your duty. Now people may argue, Krishna is asking us to do all the duty and finally give up all the results. Is it fair? Why I should give up the result if I have done all the activity? Now we have to understand in what context this is spoken. If you really want to escape from this material bondage, or if you want to get liberated from this bondage, you have to understand to whom it belongs. Just like if you are planting a mango tree, if you put a mango plant, after 10 years, you'll get mango fruit. Now, the person who has planted it, he may claim everything belongs to me. All the mangoes should belong to me, but it is not so. What is my contribution? I have taken the seed from somewhere which is not designed by me and I have put it in the earth which is not designed by me and the water that I provide is not created by me and the sunlight, air and all the ingredients required for the plant, it is all given by the nature. So what is my contribution? I have, I have put the seed and I have just taken care of it such that somebody cannot, will not come and destroy it or some animal will not come and destroy the plant, that much I will get, definitely. But I cannot claim the 100% proprietorship over that plant. The karmanyeva adhikaraste. You have the right to perform activity because you can't live without doing any activity. You have to perform any activity. But don't think that you are the uh, only person who can enjoy the phala. Or in other sense, don't get attached to this fella. If a businessman wants to start a business and he's completely uh, disturbed, what will happen to the result, whether I'll make a profit or not, then he will never be able to start the business. He should be ready, either it is uh, profit or loss. He should be ready to take up both. He should, uh, don't get, think, don't think that you will always make profit. All, don't uh, think too much and uh, you, uh, don't fail in doing your activity. Anybody want to uh, read this? 
माधुरी माता जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी द लॉर्ड से you cannot stop your work neither you can enjoy the activities the fruits of your activities that is the work on spiritual plane bhagavad gita 2.46247 new york march 28 1966 hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna this bhagavad gita is spoken to lord shri uh, by lord krishna to his devotee so if you want to understand bhagavad gita as it is spoken by Ar- krishna to arjuna one should take up the plane of spiritual life it is in the spiritual plane the one who wants to advance in spiritual life should take this instruction and once to one who wants to advance his material life he may not be able to understand all the instructions that is given by krishna so krishna is completely uh, he is directly giving the solution means the solution for the root cause of our problem why we have bound here he is not only trying to some adjustment make some adjustments so that you can get some temporary happiness and forget the problems for some time no it is a permanent solution you just take to this karma yoga just give up the attachment to the result of your work then you will always be happy anybody wants to like to read this sarita mata ji हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी धन प्रणाम बुद्धि योगा वर्सेस कर्म योगा योगा स्था कुरु कर्मानी संगम त्यक्वा धनंजय सिद्धि असिद्धियो समो भूतवा समात्म योगा उच्यते परफॉर्म योर ड्यूटी इक्विपॉइज ओ अर्जुना अबेंडनिंग ऑल अटैचमेंट टू सक्सेस और फेलियर सच इक्वानिमिटी इज कॉल्ड योगा Bhagavad Gita 2.48. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, this is not Buddhi Yoga versus Mataji. It is or because we have Buddhi Yoga and Karma Yoga same meaning is same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So finally, Arjuna Krishna is speaking. Perform your duty and be equipoised, Arjuna, and abandon the attachment to success or failure. So that uh, this is called Yoga. So Yoga means connection, connection to the Lord. And uh, how you have to do? You have to be equipoised in both. Continuing further, any volunteers? Radha Vallabhi Mata Ji. Buddhi Yoga. Or uh, Buddhi Yoga kar, slash Karma Yoga. Lord Krishna now directly says that Arjuna should fight for the sake of fighting because he desires the battle. That is the indirect hint given by Krishna to Arjuna in this verse, two dot thirty eight purport. Indirectly, Arjuna was advised to act in Krishna, as Krishna told him, two point forty eight purport. Thank you, Mr. Krishna. So in life, we will not be able to understand each and every. instructions of guru and krishna so it is better to follow their instruction when we are in confusion whether to take right or left whether to do or not whatever the guru says whatever the spiritual master gives the instruction as prabhupada also told when i went to america i did not know what to do uh, whether to go left or right or what why i come here but i have only followed my followed the instructions of my spiritual master whatever i have achieved here it all goes to my spiritual master bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur so that is the mood in which the devotee does the activity so we have completed three reasons first one is compassion krishna gave the knowledge of soul and enjoyment in full reaction the karma kanda portion then arjuna was fearful about sinful reaction that is solved by buddhi yoga karma yoga arjuna just dovetail the result of your activity in service to the lord so that you will not have any sin so in this uh, regard there are two important shloka okay before that we'll see the uh, overview of second chapter
uh, anybody wants to read who has not read till now there are many people who are yeah. spectators but they are not read or they have not come any time anybody likes to come up like that prabhu ji myself yeah okay prabhu yeah sure overview of bhagavad gita chapter 2 Srila Bhakti Vinoda Thakur has summarized the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita as being the contents of the whole text. In the Bhagavad Gita, the subject matters are Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. In the second chapter, Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga have been clearly discussed and a glimpse of Bhakti Yoga has also been given as the contents of the complete text. 2.7 to purpose, perfect. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Srila Bhakti Siddha, uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he is a, uh, Srila Prabhupada's guru is Srila Bhakti Siddhan Sarasri Thakur. His guru is Srila Gaurakishwar Das Babaji Maharaj. His guru is Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, uh, who is a father of Srila Bhakti Siddhan Sarasri Thakur, that is Prabhupada's guru. So he has told here, <coughs> this chapter is a summary of entire Bhagavad Gita. It has everything in it. Jnana, karma, jnana, bhakti, everything is there, but bhakti is just glimpse of bhakti is given. But karma yoga and jnana yoga are discussed very uh, uh, clearly, very elaborately in this second chapter. This is the second biggest chapter in the entire Bhagavad Gita. Now, over of, of the second chapter, Arjuna is surrendering from text number 1 to 10. Then jnana, that is the knowledge of the soul from 11 to 30. Then Karma Kanda section is from 31 to 37. Buddhi Yoga or Karma Yoga is discussed from 38 to 53. Then finally, from 54 to 72, the Sthitha Gir Muni. That means now, now Arjuna heard that one should become a devotee. Giving up all the results in the service of the Lord is possible only for a devotee. Otherwise, not possible. Just like children serve the parents because they have love otherwise why we should show love uh, we should give up our result to anybody we are uh, giving up the result of our activity to someone means we have some love for them we have some relationship with them and who has relationship with the lord only the devotees so we can conclude that here arjuna has to become a devotee of the lord then only he can give his result to the lord then Arjuna asks, what are the characteristics of the devotee or this Siddhadir Muni, one who is in the spiritual plane? So that will be answered in from 54 to 72. That is the last section of Bhagavad Gita. Now there is a pair exercise. So there are two questions. We'll make two groups. You can decide which group you want to join. Uh, text number 40 and 41. Text number 40 says that Pratyabhayo Navidyate, which means that there is no sinful reaction one who is serving the lord neha vikramana shosti pratyavayo nevidyate sulpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhaya second point is vyavasayatmika buddhi that means one who has one pointed attention in serving the lord then ekeha kurunandana bahushakahi anantashta buddhaya avyavasayanam others will have so many goals in their life. So these are the two points. Read this verse and purport and discuss the significance of these two lines. So we'll have two groups here, uh, breakout room. I'll give you, now it's already time. We have how much time more? 15 minutes. Okay, this is the last exercise. Then we'll uh, conclude. We can take two minutes. You, you may discuss in the group or you can discuss among you. You can just uh, make a list of among uh, within yourself okay because there is no much time two minutes you can take the break uh, breakout rooms will start now i'll make two groups i'm opening the rooms
Okay, I'm going to close the rooms. It will be it will be joining within one minute. Okay, Hare Krishna, welcome back. We have one minute time. <clears throat> Those who want to answer can answer. There is no need to repeat the points again and again. If you think that the point is covered, no need to repeat. So you can raise your hand. You can uh, start discussing. It's just a sharing of thoughts, whatever you understood from this. Harini Mataji. Hare Krishna. So, uh, verse 40 is actually about the characteristics of Buddhi Yoga. And verse 41 is uh, these characteristics have further been explained. So, in verse 40, it is said that there is no loss or diminution in this endeavor. And a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. So, any activity that we do in Krishna consciousness is considered to be the highest transcendental quality of work. And what is meant by that? It is done only for the benefit of Krishna, without an expectation of sense gratification. So when, when we do activity in Krishna consciousness, what happens? This saves us from the greatest danger of life. And what is that greatest danger of life? It is to, again, glide down to a lower species of human form of life. Because we see, we have obtained this human form of life, and this human form of life is very, very rare. It is considered to be like a drop of water in a desert. So one can say, can we see actually a drop of water in a desert? No, we can't see that. It is very rare. Like that, this human form of life is very, very rare. And the greatest danger is we lose that human form of life and we glide down to lower species of life. So what happened? This Buddhi Yoga provides at least shooty of human birth and higher elevation in the next life. So this is the unique quality of working Krishna consciousness. So that was about verse 14, verse 41, to summarize it. It is said, but how can we elevate ourselves is to get the association. Uh, Mataji, yeah. Mataji, let's the other group. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhupada, you are telling something. Hare one, one is enough. One person, one point I told. Okay. So first group, one, first point, second group, second point. <clears throat> you can discuss. Yeah. We'll give chance to others. Yeah. Sarita Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Here the Vyavsai Atmika Buddhi. Prabhuji, this, this word has been repeated again in 2.44. It is there in 2.41. It is there again too by the Vyavsai Atmika Buddhi, where they try to tell that a person who's totally devoted towards the Lord, who is fixed in his mind and who has the, uh, the, who has a very firm determination that he doesn't get bewildered by other things, which is we have Sai, Atmika, and Buddhi means a person who is totally concentrated mind and brain to the service of the Lord. Now, that person is, is said to be like an equipoise or a person who can progress a lot into the Krishna consciousness. And again, that they, that they say that Bhog Eshwarya Prasakta Nam in 2.44 also he says that Bhog Eshwarya Prasakta Nam Taya Aprataha Chetasam. We have Sai, Atmika, Buddhi, Samadhona, Vidhiyate. 
Now, in that case, also this they are saying the same thing that the person has to be just totally well determined, non bewildered, not no no left right directions, go straight tubular vision, just to be uh, concentrated and just be the total surrender to Lord. So that means that it's Sayatmika. Hare Krishna. That's my understanding. Thank you. Just uh, chant Hare Krishna and go back to Krishna. Just, just to add a point, uh, Prabhuji. Yeah. Uh, it shall be noted that while being focused and determined, uh, be in the service, uh, be under the guidance of a spiritual master yes. who guides you through this process and uh, ensures that you do not uh, waver in uh, falling into fruitive actions. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Rakshita Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, another addition. So, Krishna Bhakti Koyal is Sarva Karma Kritahoy. That means whatever, in case we are uh, dovetailing all our activities to Krishna, then uh, we are actually, uh, you know, there is no need for us to do any other uh, uh, activity. As in, we are, we are not obligated to uh, do anything else because if Krishna is satisfied, everybody is satisfied. And uh, how, how do we reach to that extent? Understanding that Krishna is everything, Vasudevam Sarvamiti, right? So everything belongs to him. And what are we? we, are, we are, uh, it's like we are, uh, we are paying rent to Krishna by living in his planet, material world. Uh, and uh, uh, he is the landlord. And how can we take, how can we say this is mine when nothing belongs to us, right? So understanding Vasudevam Sarvamiti, uh, uh, we are actually getting a lot of benefits. Uh, you know, uh, Karma Yoga says we are living, giving our uh, results to Krishna, but we are actually getting more than that. So we are uh, we are getting liberated. We are getting Krishna Prem. We are we are uh, not bound to any reactions. So what more do we need? I don't I don't understand. So um, uh, this is one of the benefit uh, uh, of Vyavasar Mekabudar. Hare. Hare. This is like a person in the prison house. We are giving him the key. And do whatever you want. You can keep the key in your pocket and sit inside the prison house, or you can open the door and come out. So Krishna is giving the key to us. How to come out of the bondage? This is how you just give up. Just like a monkey, to catch the monkey, there is a way. You can you put uh, some uh, some food items that is uh, dry fruits in a small pot with a small neck. The monkey will come and put in his hand inside and it will make a big fist like this. And the fist, when it becomes large, it will not come out. It got locked there. And it will not come out until he will give up that, the dry fruits which are there inside the pot. As soon as it gives up, it can easily come out. So similarly, as long as we are attached to the fruitive uh, results, we are bound here. And when we give it up, it will we will be liberated or we can come out of this and giving up the fruits of result it doesn't mean that you don't get the uh, basic necessities of life krishna will give definitely more than what we ne needed krishna knows what or what we really need we if we ask krishna for something he will give some that much and if we don't ask him he will give everything whatever is needed and he will not give what is harmful for us even if we ask him so that is being a devotee, it is the best thing that we can achieve in our life. Sarita Mataji, you want to add something? Prabhuji, I want a question if we'll have time. We can I ask now. Or... Prabhuji, one thing only I want to ask that if there is no, in the mind, there is no uh, feeling that you're going to get any result, won't that make us a bit less ambitious? Will it not? bring down that okay we are not bothered for the result this much study if you have an exam studying eight hours is okay ten hours is okay whatever has to happen will happen we don't want, want to bother for the result or even for any other in a profession or anywhere would it not make us less ambitious in that way if you go to text number 47 again the, what the last line says there you... yes the last line krishna uh, marker don't be akarmani by hearing all these things. So that is the instruction given, given by Krishna. So there are three motivations, four motivations for the work. First one is fear. You can you can put somebody at the gunpoint and make him to work some for you. That is out of fear. You are doing something. 
making somebody to work second one is the result you can pay someone and get the work done third one is the duty bound you can make him understand that this is your duty you have to do this just like the soldiers are fighting they are fighting uh, they are protecting the border it is not just because of the salary that they are getting they are giving their life so they have that duty consciousness the duty fully doing the higher than that is the love just like the mother serves the child without any expectation so that can be considered as very close to the devotion that we have for krishna so the motivation what kind of motivation we have that's why the karmakanda or the varna ashrama everything is there one who is uh, doing work in the beginning he may do it out of fear or in the later stage he may do it out of uh, result expectation for result and next he, he will understand it's my duty to serve the lord i have taken so much from the lord and it's my duty only because i don't get the result i should not stop it then if you come to the final stage love out of love we serve the lord either i just like finally chaitanya mahaprabhu tells in the shikshashtakam ashlishya va padaratam pinashtam adarshanan marmahatam karotu va yatha tatha va vidadatu lampato mat prananatastu sa eva na parah you can embrace me or you can make me broken hearted i don't mind you are the only swami you are the only lord for me this is the pure devotional service until we reach that level we need to be we need to have some uh, we'll have some uh, motivation for our work and mataji this is exclusively for devotion what we are discussing in the material world not in the material world it will not happen see somebody <laughs> somebody asked uh, i think Prabhupada, somewhere it is asked uh, they came to temple and uh, they saw brahmacharis these brahmacharis they joined the temple at the very early age until the last breath they serve the lord and they don't take a single rupees for salary how is it possible they are astonished and they told if can you make our employees also like this of course we will pay them some little salary doesn't matter but we want them to work because our brahmacharis work from mornings morning 3:30 they'll wake up and up to 9:30 10 o'clock they'll work continuously for the lord if this happens in the in the corporate world then. then our nation will go somewhere <laughs> it is not possible because you can't give what they want you mm-hmm. can't you can't satisfy the soul because here the soul is being satisfied just by attending the mangala arati just by attending the guru puja we are getting so much of purification and we get so much of satisfaction you can't get it even if you get so many crores of rupees of salary because there are so many people who don't know how to spend the money that is commit suicide also mm-hmm. why did you commit you i did thought of committing suicide because i don't have anything to do i don't know what to do so okay. i committed suicide such people also there so we can't just compare the love the benefit the what we get out of this spirituality you just can't compare it this to the material benefit material. yes ma'am we are not at the platform so it is very difficult to understand it's difficult to understand thank you thank you so much hare thank you hare krishna deepa rani mata ji hare krishna hare krishna tanji i just wanted to add one point here after learning uh, what is vyavasayatmika buddhi from uh, our uh, dear devotees and uh, what is uh, like uh, the meaning of uh, what is form faith on god and uh, Uh, there is uh, one more uh, we should have uh, determination uh, that we should never forget that we are uh, souls we are souls and the knowledge of vasudeva vasudeva uh, as um, rakshita mataji also told as uh, vasudeva is the cause of all causes and as all in all and one more thing what we need to um, add is uh, the best practice of service to krishna is service to guru yes uh, that is the like uh, Uh, the uh, famous prayer for the uh, spiritual master is yasya prasadat bhagavat prasado yasya prasadanna gati kutopi dhyayam suta stuvam tasya yasya stri sandhyam vande guru sri charanaravindam so that is by satisfaction of the spiritual master the supreme personality of god had become satisfied because the guru knows the nature of the student and he can uh, guide how to Uh, act in krishna consciousness and also one should act formally and take instructions uh, as their missions in their life yes mataji so, 
Hare Krishna. We can't go directly. We have to go through spiritual master. Spiritual master will introduce us to Krishna back. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, just one point. Uh, this corporate world doesn't teach austerity. Yeah. And uh, what the uh, Swamiji's as well as the Prabhus who be in the ashram, uh, they can move around free pocket without any rupee in hand. Yes. Somebody will take care of them. Somebody will feed them. Somebody will take their travel. Somebody. So someone asked that, how do they be so satisfied? Because everything is provided. It's not provided in cash and salary. It's provided in various buffets of benefits and the joy that you have and a life of austerity is taught to you there. Yes. Krishna. Do you agree? Yeah, Professor. Krishna knows exactly what we need. You may get so much of salary, but you may not get you know, time for eating also. Some people work for continuously so many hours. They don't have time for eating. What is the need of having all this money? When they will, they don't have time for enjoying it. But Krishna is directly giving like that enjoyment which you need. He will not give the money, then you use that money, spend it, then you find out what is real happiness. No, I am just giving the ready food. You just have it. So Krishna is always taking care of. Just like uh, if a frog is there inside a stone, water, Krishna keeps the water inside the stone itself so that the frog will remain there. And Krishna can observe everything. Just like a, a, on the dark night, if there is a dark ant on the dark uh, store Arrest. Krishna can see that we can't see Krishna provides food for that also yes Prabhu. thank you for the point Hare Krishna. so we'll come to the conclusion it's already to cross across the two two o'clock so what are the objectives we have seen the understanding part presented a brief overview of Krishna's instructions on the jnana and explain Krishna's responses to Arjuna's first three reasons for not fighting and uh, summary of Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, as uh, uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has told, explained how the chapter 2 of the Bhagavad Gita summarizes the contents of the Gita. So, this is about knowledge, and this is the evaluation, evaluated the relevance of the Karmakanda. We have done the group discussion, divisions of the Vedas in the practice of Krishna consciousness with reference to the verses and analogies from Bhagavad Gita. Then, finally, discuss the appropriate and inappropriate application of the phrase. Karmani Eva Adhikaraste. So you, you have the duty to perform the activity and uh, you don't have the right on the uh, result. It doesn't mean that you don't get the result, but you don't have, you, know, you should not claim your result. You'll get much more than that. Personal application discuss significance of the terms Satyavayo Navidyate and Vyavasayatmika Buddhi was the last point. Finally, concluding quote. Uh, may I request someone to uh, read this? Okay, Giridhar Gopal. So, yes. Concluding quote Bogeshwarya Prasadta Nam Tyag Ritar Chetasam. Chetasam. This material advancement of civilization is very nice, very dazzling. Just like when we pass on the street of or road of your American cities. It looks so nice, so many lights and so many night illuminating signboards. But we should always remember that this nice situation is not permanent settlement. Any moment, I will have to give up everything. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. One more person. Yeah, Murali Dharan Prabhu. Vyavasayatmika buddhin samadhau na vidyate. So therefore, if one becomes attached to this false platform, illuminating, so-called illuminating, false platform, then his determination to go back to God it will not be very much intense. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So we have come to the conclusion of this chapter. I thank all the devotees for being with us in this entire discussion. If there is any question, we can take up now. Sri Hari Priya Mataji. Regarding the questions which you have given last time, I would want to understand the difference and the reference how to make between the personal application and the practical application point of view. Uh, and at the same time, there is one more. Yeah. 
Yeah, you continue. You can complete your question. Um, yeah. Prabhuji, there is one more query regarding the 11 questions for chapter 1 which you had given. There are, okay, I can, shall I speak? So let me decide which answer to be given in a detailed fashion, like whether the background story has to be given, some history has to be told, or we have to be to the point. Will it depend upon the number of marks that will be associated with the question, or we simply have to do it in a descriptive fashion, all the questions irrespective of the one marker, two marker, four marker kind? No, uh, Mataji, I have, uh, Mataji has, Netrauti Mataji has shared a PDF in that there are two questions for open book that you have to answer in 650 to 700 words and you have to type it this has to be answered to the point and uh, you should not give any vague answer those uh, two examples are there in the uh, student handbook that you have to uh, yes, Prabhuji, yes. refer and reference how to give you have to mention what which uh, sloka which uh, number everything has to mention everything is there you explained there so that is one point. And the last date for submission is next month 15. It was not August 15 by mistake I have put there. It is next uh, June 15th you have to uh, submit that. You can send to that mail ID which is there in the PDF itself. And regarding other one, closed book questions, you have to answer and keep it yourself. It is one word answer, one or two words answer. I think you are asking that only, no? Some yes, step. Prabhuji. You have to answer all the six chapters questions questions of all the six chapters because the exam is together so those all questions along with the analogy from that itself you are you will get questions there will there is no question from outside for closed book closed book means it is an exam this is these two questions are open book you can see the book you can hear the class you can make all the research and analysis whatever you want finally you have to get a good essay this is having 65 percent weightage of entire bhakti shastri how good you are in understand understanding Prabhupada books and summarizing it and you are presenting it okay any other question mataji prabhuji is there any specific way of identifying personal application and practical application for preaching application sorry you are you have to explain if you like if you would like to share you can share that okay Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any more questions? Harini Mataji. Yes, uh, Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, for the shloka memorization, do we need to remember the translation as well or only the uh, shloka? Both, Mataji. Shloka and translation. Yeah. Uh, we will tell you, you. When to give the mm -hmm. shloka, translation, uh, shloka recitation. Uh, as till, uh, till then, you can keep practicing that okay okay thank you Puruji. and need not give all the shloka at a time you can take few shlokas and answer maybe first six chapter you can give together and if that is also difficult you can take first three chapters together and then give the uh, shloka recitation that is fine okay any other questions Sabuji, that we have to send audio or what that this shloka we are thinking of recitation. a video of every participant and uploading in a drive that's how we do or else we have to come like this online in zoom and answer or give the reset okay. i will okay. i'll update you okay thank you so much Are you okay if there are any questions hope everyone has given their attendance muralidan prabhu anybody pending Or shall we... Mataji, you have any feedback on the attendance? Because I didn't uh, look at the page. Ji, today, very less number of uh, participants are filled. Please click on the link and uh, submit the attendance, please. Yeah, I request all the participants to give the attendance. Any other uh, announcements, Prabhuji, Mataji? That's it. Prabhuji, we can stop the recording. Yeah, right. uh,